Hi everyone, welcome back again to another another video in this series looking at the build of this uh, 16mm scale Hudson Hunterlet. And as you may be able to see from the video, um, quite a bit of progress. As I said in the last video, um, I felt like I was kind of on the home stretch. And it's come together very, very quickly. Um, so I want to show you that it is all kind of as a model. So here we go. Look. And stop and reverse, bring it back again. So that's all being done from the remote, um, as we looked at in the last video. Um, so if I pick it up, we can have a better look at it. So uh, we've got the grill on the front, which I'll come back and talk about in a minute. Um, well, obviously, the body's on the chassis. Sorry, should have started with the obvious thing, shouldn't I? Uh, the body's on the chassis, um, just kind of clipped into place and then glued in. Um, I've done the grill on the front. As I say, I'll talk about that in a minute because there's a, a couple of little issues. Um, Side panels are in place, but I it's the weather's not great, and I usually just stand in the garden with the tinder spray paint, so I haven't been able to spray these yet. At which point, they also don't have handles, but they have their magnetic attachments on the back, um, and there's one on either side. Um, I've added the control panel upright and some pins uh, with the glass the glass beads on the end uh, for the for the control handles. Uh, again, I'll come back to those in a minute because there's another little modelling uh, tip in there. Um, the coupling blocks are on, they're glued on with the jig. Um, so yeah, everything kind of came together really, really quickly. Um, I mean, I can show you, um, so as I said, it is a tight fit, but um, everything is in here. I mean, you can see it worked, so it must have been in here. We've got the battery. The fuse you can just about see is sitting in that cutout I added in the top piece where I kind of um, give a bit of extra headroom. And then the um, local remote is sat at this end um, just behind the radiator. Um, I added so a little bit of um, tape, electrical tape to the side of the battery uh, just to make sure that I couldn't short the local remote against the metal case of, not the battery. I did some tape to the outside of the motor um, to make sure that I couldn't short the local remote, any of the contacts on the local remote against the metal case of the battery, of the motor. Um, I may go back and just kind of wrap the local remote board itself um, in something to avoid um, any chance of of, of, of of catching it with anything. Um, but it's in it's in place and it all it all works. And as I say, the um, the magnetic um, adapt the con connectors for the side panels all fit and work um, so yeah that's all all going really really well um, so I just dropped one of the bits I need to show you um, so yeah so let's start by talking about the front grill so I'd cut one previously um, and I was going to use it I'll see if I'll find it um, but um, I didn't in the end because what happened was I noticed that when cutting the sides um, it's kind of difficult to see because this stuff's fine. I'm losing some of the strands. So you can see one of the vertical strands is missing from the edge here. Um, and it's it's fine cutting across, straight across. But as soon as you start going to an angle, what happens is the the scissors or whatever you're cutting with it tends to kind of can catch or you end up with tiny little bits of, of the, the vertical wire, uh, which can easily kind of fall off the edge. And I ended up doing like three or four trying to get one that worked and failed every time and in the end what I did was I actually cut a slightly bigger rectangle um, piece and sprayed it black uh, first then cut it and then spread it again and the idea being that, that first cut that first spray of paint was hopefully holding all the wires in place so they couldn't move around quite so much as I was cutting it and that worked on the first attempt so that's now the one that's glued in place on the front um, so yeah, so that that works that works nicely. Um, what else can I say? Uh, right, yeah. So the pins, um, as you can see, um, are all nicely in place. I've taken the the shine off the metal body of the pin with some brass black. It's the um, it's this stuff, Birchwood Casey uh, brass black. I used their uh, degreaser as well first. Uh, but this worked, this worked really well to do the, the blackening. Um, the problem with them is that I needed to bend them. Um, and um, if you remember, they're these um, glass 
head pins. This nice, nice box of pins. Let me see if I'll find one. Um, so, um, they're a they're too long, so I needed to cut them, and b um, I needed to bend some of them. Um, so, cutting them, um, I just used a diamond file to kind of get part way through, and then two sets of pliers, and I could snap them, and that was fine. Bending was more of an issue. Um, I broke a whole bunch trying to bend them because um, as soon as you try, as soon as I tried to bend them, they they would just they would just snap. Um, not necessarily where you were bending, but sometimes just the ball would would kind of shatter on the end, even if you were bending it right down here, some right down here somewhere, the ball on the end would just shatter off. Um, so in the end, I broke out the blowtorch. Um, so yeah, so here was one I did where I actually got the bend in the wrong place. But you can see where it's been blackened uh, by being heat heated up with the blowtorch. So um, yeah, I got it red hot with the blowtorch, uh, and then it would bend nice and easily without uh, without breaking. Um, so that was a that was a useful little uh, useful little tip. This is actually the one from the kitchen. Uh, it's usually used for kind of you know burning sugar on the top of things, um, but it works it works just as well for heating up um, solder and pins and use, goodness knows what. Um, so yeah useful useful tool um so yeah what do i have left to do uh well i have to um paint the figure and fit the seat so the seat is here it's all ready to go um i need to paint it and then it can sit on the end here it just fits kind of just exactly like that on the corner uh i've checked the figure does kind of just slide in reasonably it's a bit tricky to do it with a lot of hands um but it does slide in um, and obviously I need to um, paint and detail these paint these panels um, so once I've painted these panels um, I'll fix the seat uh, and then I'm and then I'll start on um, a bit more paint work so I want to pick out some of the details on things like the axle boxes uh, a little bit more so they're not just completely black I want to give them a bit of relief um, then it'll be um, a varnish um, layer so probably um, probably a matte varnish um, yeah probably a matte varnish um, and then the weathering powders on the end um, mostly to hide the mistakes with the paint um, on the buffer beams and things like that but also just to kind of break up some of the, the solid colors um, but yeah I'm really really happy with this now um, I think you know it looks the part um, it works the side panels actually do their job as side panels to keep everything inside uh, which i think is a nice is a nice touch um yeah really really happy with this um i had thought that i might just kind of finish this one and then maybe just throw it away or or sell it off and do another one that fixed some of the bits where i'd messed up the paintwork and stuff but i think i'm really happy with this that i'm just going to keep it um yeah um but it it does mean that um we're definitely getting onto the home home stretch now, um, which is which is nice. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so hopefully, um, as I say, I'm not going to get much done over the weekend, I don't think. Um, but hopefully, um, beginning of next week, I can finish off the off the details. Uh, one thing I did find was that I've touched up. If you remember in the previous video, we talked about the fact that the edge of this was kind of half red, half white, and I've touched it up and made it red. Um, I actually touched it up using the tinlet of crimson. So I couldn't. Get, so when I painted the four millimeter one, I used Humbrol Acrylic Twenty Crimson in an aerosol can. But I do have the little tinlet, um, and I used the tinlet to touch it up. And you can't tell the difference between where I used the tinlet to touch it up and the the red colour on the outside. They're they're not obviously different. Um, so in the end, it looks like I did get a fairly good match um, to the Humbrol Twenty in that um, Citroen Wicked Red. Um, so quite happy with that. Um, yeah, still lots of little details to do, paintwork, weathering, but yeah, no, really, 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 really chuffed. Uh, and the fact that I can actually get it to uh, move along the track um, already now, um, doing what it's supposed to do, is just fantastic. It's, uh, yeah, really, really happy um, with that. Um, you know, it's a loco, it works. Uh, and um, yeah, really, really happy. Um, so, um, yeah, hopefully next video, maybe maybe the last one, I don't know, in the series, because um, we may have basically finished. Um, 